Gen 5! Oh, there is going to be hell to pay. Not for Pokemon, but for the people who slammed it because they put eyes on the chandelier. It's good in its own right, you bunch of Billy Guns. Training to go Super Saiyan. All right, immaturity aside, this is the venom-induced generation for me as it injected all of my adrenaline regarding the series onto the internet in the form of countdowns of most disturbing, derpiest, and cutest Pokemon as well as many underrated mismadventures. <laughs> now watch what you want, you lovable oaf. The roster, while I can admit, was something that ironically tried to refresh the series as it recycled old designs, while other designs have tried a bit too hard. There are still plenty of exceptions when it comes down to not judging things at face value. Yeah, okay, it was the second generation to arrive on the same console, excluding Gold and Silver's availability on the regular Game Boy. So, therefore, there wasn't going to be as many graphical updates, but with animated sprites, Triple tainted battles and further expansion on the world of Pokemon. That's always a treat, right? So to prove how much better my perspectives and aesthetics are in comparison to yours, here are my top five generation five Pokemon. That should be a tongue twister, but it's not. Pimp! <laughs> here lies the big daddy who can convert you into fleshy CDs if you're not careful. It's Haxorus. Haxorus is a Pokemon who, to me, looks more like a Digimon. And what I mean by that is the level of detail applied to it makes it seem like it's a walking Seedramon or something. It stems from the cuddly Aksu, and cuddly if you don't mind missing a few fingers fracture, to which Haxorus has come to show that it can just come in and cause an outrage, with how it's a good exception for the Gen 5 designs. Can you just shut up with that Gen 5 defense stuff? It's getting older than these closet stains. Yeah, I guess it- <laughs> CLOSET STAINS?! Haxorus stands proud on its legs, carrying a life orb or a lumberry with its legs to prepare for its adamant or jolly nature attacks. Using moves such as Dragon Dance to keep moving first and hitting hard, Outrage for all that outness, Earthquake to counter Steel types who are resistant to dragon moves, and either Taunt to stop any harmful effects or Poison Jab for more coverage. As we dive into the lore of the hacks, they can cut steel. Very nice. They can cut steel as well. They can even cut steel! Oh my god, this Pokemon's an animal! And based on its origin, I, I think at some point I need to make a war team, with Haxorus representing a battle axe. Maybe a Farfetch'd with the short sword and Marowak with the short sword. And Hitmonchan with the brass knuckles. Or, or spiked fists. Petwar! <laughs> Introducing the bug who wraps itself in aloe vera toilet paper, Axelgore! I did think of a few things when imagining Excelgore. The first was a wingless ninjask in relation to its speed. The second was its bizarre evolution concept, which involves trading Shelmut for Carablast and not getting the expected result. Not to mention how it jumps without any legs, like it's a human pogo stick. Excelgore is quite frail in battle, but fear not, as it has a few other tricks within its thin membrane, such as a focus sash. Very convenient layering to replace pockets. You can choose between either Sticky Hole to prevent the sash from being snatched, or Unburden to double its speed when it's used up. It works well as a spike stacker with Encore for repetition, Final Gambit to let it give up, and Bug Buzz for that stab in the chest. Haha! <laughs> so yes, Axelgore does wrap itself in thin membrane to hydrate itself, and being a ninja shows how it should be added to a pop culture for ninjas who everybody knows who the hell they are. Being based on either an auto racer or a ninja, or both. That's some silent motoring right there. And then it's a giant tube worm. Gross. It is a shame that this Pokemon isn't a part of 6th generation because being named after Escargo, or Escargo, oui, oui, which is a French word for snail, means that it would have fit in well with the entire theme of Kalos. But it makes this list better, I guess. Three! Look, Gigalith is not a knockoff of Golem. Besides from the evolution concept, there is nothing extremely similar about them. It's Gigalith! It's defined as the Pokemon that started off with an anus on its face, then have a shaft come between it, and then utilize it to pull off a frown. Pupils included. Or are they freckles? I like how it resembles a moving rocky structure with what appears to be crystals rising out of it, and giving that intimidating look of death. Maybe anal death? Gigalith puts Sturdy to good use with a cut stat berry, giving it a lead during the next turn, while in the meantime, setting up Stealth Rocks, using Explosion during its burst phase, and then Rock Blast for the stab, 
and Earthquake to take care of those pesky steel types. Gigalith can blow away a mountain. And yeah, they're crystals. And they do more than just look good. I have mentioned its origins in another video, but to reiterate, first is the crystal formation, which defines who it is and what it does, and how its name just sounds epic. Gigas, Greek for giant. Monolith, Lithos. My god, I'm ecstatic! DIE! Here is a Pokemon that seems to be possibly overshadowed by the popular Electros. It's Galvantula! I imagine people who are overly afraid of spiders will disagree with everything I say, but making an electric tarantula sounds like an awesome concept already, with the typing being unique. I'll just say unique because it doesn't make any sense to say extremely unique. Unique is unique. And who ever thought that a blood-sucking insect like a tick would evolve into a flesh-eating goliath? It's best to make use of a focus sash in order to protect his frail defenses, while Compound Eyes raises his bug-eyed accuracy so that Thunder is a lot more effective. A sticky web will lower the speed of any Pokemon switched in, and then Bug Buzz will provide more stabbing for some enjoyment. I am not sadistic. While either Thunder Wave can immobilize sweepers, or Energy Ball can take out Pokemon like Swampert. Galvantula seems to make good use of his electric capabilities in order to protect itself as well as catch prey in terrifying ways, which aren't really disturbing considering that spiders in real life will generally do the same thing. It's based on the legend known as the Tarantula, said to roam the Amazon rainforest in Brazilian mythology, whilst galvanized and surrendered its sight to Zeus, the Thunder God. Hire me now, Marvel! In! And now, providing us with the wonderful life we have with a smiley face upon its surface. The sun greets us with its glorious presence. But the sun is not a Pokemon, so we'll have to settle with the next best thing. Volcarona! Its entire design makes it resemble the father of all, even moths. Not to mention, it's the Pokemon that reaches its definition at the second highest level of evolution of any Pokemon, at level 59. It takes on more of an elegant look, with fitting colors and assertion to show others that it means business, despite being underground out of sight in the deserts. Oh mama, well, uh, using a Pasho Berry can temporarily nullify its weakness to water, or you can use a Lumberry. You can then make use of its Flame Body ability to knock those physical attacking opportunists off their high horses, while Quiver Dance boosts its special stats and speed. And thank God that Fire Blast has better accuracy than this electric and ice counterparts, whilst packing Giga Drain to keep it at optimum condition. You have Thunder Wave for immobilization and Energy Ball. You know this is the third bug type on this list, right? Well, I guess Gen 5 realized that bug types needed more of the spotlight. Being a replacement for the sun is far from being a replacement bus service as it provides all living things with the ability to worship a visible god. Somebody's got to believe in something. Its origin is quite sparse, ranging from the phrase, like a moth to a flame, to a solar deity controlling various aspects of the sun. There's also a seraph, the wings of a tiger lily, and the antenna of the headpiece of Hathor, or Hathor. And the name origins include Volcano and a brand of beer, as well as Vulcan, the Roman god of fire. So uh, let's go over the overall rankings yet again uh, and see if you like it. Corona. It's God. 
Well, that's not spoiling anything because uh, my, my Gen 6 Pokemon could top it, you never know. So, um, yeah, I want to apologize because I haven't been on this channel as much doing things. <laughs> As you know, recently I um, moved my Let's Play stuff over to my other channel. It's all still here, it's just uh, unlisted on this channel, so you have to go to the playlists if you actually want to see those Let's Plays um, again. And uh, I've also been doing a lot of coursework. You can't face the Chicago, you monster. So uh, I've had to put a lot of this heavily scripted stuff on hold. <laughs> so therefore, I can come back to it being a lot more um, pushy than usual. Too strong for you, buster. So, that's all doing good, I think. So, thank you for watching. You can follow my Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr for all the updates and extra stuff that I do. You can also f follow my new channel, KB Mad Adventures, where I do all my gameplay commentary stuff. This week, uh, week? Not just this week, I'm doing Bloodborne uh, as a long let's play, as well as I recently did a Witcher 3 uh, first impressions montage video. And besides from that, that's all I've got for now. Stay tuned for episode 6, and I've also got um, a Dark Souls vs. Bloodborne comparison coming out soon. Uh, thank you for watching, and until next time, lights out. I mean, I really don't know what it is. I mean, like, how are other people bad at making tea and I'm apparently good at making tea? I don't get it.